so we've come this far and uh, we might as well go uh, go to distance with this thing right with making crab apple spread um, so I'm going to try to show you uh, the last part of this the jarring part of this um, hopefully it comes out I just want you to hear that sound hopefully I can get it happening right uh, if not it, it's going to be warm enough so it'll be perfectly sealed I mean we went through all of the crab apple spread that we made last year we only found one little jar left right so um, you know it doesn't have to keep that long because we're going to go through it and we've given it as gifts and people have gone through it no one's got any more left right so we need another batch definitely okay and uh, what I'm going to do now I've already set the oven at 375 and I got uh, the jars in there okay and I have 12 jars in I think I got 12 jars in there, 12 50 milligram um, jars, half a liter jars, right? Um, so 375 I think should be hot enough. I might kick it up to 4, 425. I have this thing on low and what I need to do with this is I need to stir it, okay? Because this is the part where you're kicking up the spread, the jam, and you're heating it up but you don't want the thing to stick in the bottom, right? So let me grab. I got my water beside me. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to be constantly stirring this. Okay. Now this is going to take a while for it to heat up because I have it on low. I have the double pot going here uh, boiling the water in the bottom and there's water on top and I have my mitts with me you need your mitts for this process and I have the lids right I have these guys in the pot that's sitting on top uh, to get boiled basically without burning the, the rubber on them right so basically I want uh, the lids to be disinfected as well and what I'm going to do is as soon as that thing's heated up now it might take a while so I'll probably turn off the camera and then come back when it's all uh, when it's all ready but what I'm going to do is uh, I got a glass tray there so I'm going to bring one glass at a time one jar at a time fill it up seal it leave it on the side and continuously do the process until we finish this whole pot okay and I do need to stir this on a regular basis uh, now unfortunately our oven uh, we found this out when we turn it on it has a fan that automatically goes on so apologies about the buzzing sound uh, or humming sound in the background it is sort of soothing as well uh, so there's a humming sound in the background that's coming from the oven this thing's boiling so as soon as it boils all I do is I kick it down because um, I don't want it to be boiling constantly I want it to be kick it up to a boil temperature I want the inside to be boiled uh, I should just leave it up high for a little bit still because I want the inside to reach a certain temperature I don't know what the temperature is to disinfect I you I think well most of the time I've done it I kick it up pretty high um, so I'm pretty sure I'm surpassing the minimum temperature required to uh, perfectly seal everything but you can do a search on that and uh, be more exact with your you know process if you'd like yep just making sure that we're recording give this another stir I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need the spatula let me show you what this looks like as well here's the here's the paste right all of that is apple paste, uh, crab apple paste. And uh, the pot is slowly getting hot, 
so that's good. And as I mentioned, we have uh, so what's in this pot right now that we're cooking up is the equivalent of this much uh, crab apples and I have another set left over that I still have to go through so I'm going to go through this whole process one more time but for this batch uh, what we're going to do because we have 500 ml jars uh, right now um, all clean uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to bring out the little jars uh, uh, 250 mil and even smaller uh, so we can give them away as gifts because 500 mil is a lot uh, you know some people don't go through all that and these are all the crab apples and they're still you know sitting fantastic and crab apples keep for a while but some of these were starting to you know ripen a lot so oh, here's one see here's the ripening fermenting I guess that's the word for it maybe <laughs> I don't know so basically what we're gonna do is jar this and I might um, I'll probably start cleaning this uh, second batch uh, later today and probably do the cook for it tomorrow guy I'm just gonna bring the spatula over so we're not doing too much waste doohickey here to grab each jar at a time right I'm kicking it up a little bit more on the heat on this getting nice and hot and I still have this like the temperature I have this at is at like two it's still very low right but this is a it's a very uh, uh, burns hot I guess or it's high temperature uh, um, what do you call it uh, oven uh, top right the elements they're really high as far as heat goes i'm gonna kick it up just a touch kick it up to a three I want the lid to start getting hot. Once the lid starts getting hot, uh, we're basically good to go. Good, good. <laughs> yeah, I think 375 is going to be good. I think that should work. If it doesn't, we'll do one jar. Um, and if it's we're not hearing that s sound and we're not seeing it sort of the 
the crab apple jam spread with the glass you can see a little bit of bubbling happening if you're not seeing that I'm going to kick up the temperature on the oven okay get the glasses to a little bit higher temperature and um, one other thing I've done as well is um, this is pretty important if, if you ever bake the cake if you ever done any pastry baking um, you should be doing this is uh, close all the doors and windows because you don't want any drafts coming in to um, all of a sudden for jarring anyway to crack the glass if a cold wind comes in with hot glass uh, sometimes they crack right so I want to reduce that possibility because if I pour jam into you know the apple spread the crab apple spread into a glass jar if that glass jar usually if it's gonna crack it's gonna crack on the first little pour but if it cracks after the fact if I fill it up I throw that away I can't I don't like risking little shards of glass being inside um, the, the jam or the spread right so that's one place I try to be really careful and not have any glasses breaking and this thing's kirkling now As soon as uh, the the lids on this jar are um, um, get hot enough, where the water is boiling and I know they're disinfected, I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to put it on the side. Okay, and I'm going to bring the glass and bring it closer to uh, where I'm working beside the pot because that's where I'm going to put the uh, the jars that we're going to. Uh, jar everything in right so I want it to be close and I don't need it to be any more hotter than that right once it boils it's pretty much disinfected let's kick it up a little bit more should have made uh, the amount of uh, apple paste uh, crab apple paste in here a little bit less than what it was but I wanted to do everything in one shot uh, half of it wasn't enough or it was enough but uh, I wanted to be a little bit more so uh, we went the whole distance right with that so I just put both of both of the pots that we cooked up in the same thing okay so basically our ratio now is 10 pounds to 10 pounds of crab apples to three and a half pounds of um, cane sugar right so if we don't want decimals in our ratios it'd be 20 pounds of apples to seven pounds of sugar okay so it's a little bit less than uh, uh, two to one right This thing is definitely kirkling. Did you see it? It jumped over here. Okay, I'm gonna turn down the heat on this because I don't want it to burn. I'm gonna wipe this guy off. You can see the lid has been kirkling and hitting the top of the lid, right? Which is what we want.
ideally uh, to grab these lids uh, from this one uh, you don't want prongs you want a little long thing with a magnet and it works out really good this is stick with a magnet at the end it just grabs it and you put it on unfortunately um, we don't have one we had you know I had one uh, family using one at another house but uh, that had to stay there and we don't have one I forgot to grab one uh, buy one for this cook uh, I might do it for the next cook though Kick this up. Yeah, I'm going to kick it up again on this. Okay. I still want to crackle. Now I'm going to kick up the heat on this again. Uh, yeah, that's nice and hot. I'm just going to give it one more rise in temperature. Uh, the reason I added water was because the water was going low. Right. Hopefully I didn't add too much where it's uh, going to start spilling over. And I usually, uh, when I'm doing this, I usually try to clean up as I'm going. Oh. Okay, now I'm going to kick it to medium. Hopefully it's not going to spill up. But usually um, when you're doing large cooks or uh, when you're cooking in general, I, for me anyway, I usually like to clean up as I'm going. So that means spills anywhere I clean up, try to clean up right away. And dishes I do right away if I'm done with all the stuff, right? Just makes life easier on the tail end. This lid's got a little thing that you can crack open. See if steam's coming up, and that's what I'm going to look for. Just a little bit of steam. Kick it up just a little bit more.
I don't know if you can hear that, the pots go boo, boo, kirkling. No, no lights. Nah, we don't need the lights, do we? No, no, too bright, too bright, too bright, too bright, too bright. This is nice. still sticking at the bottom right that's a nice uh, nice texture the way I want it see how hot this is very good I think that's a good ratio mm, after uh, going through the sieving and heating it up and tasting and stuff like this um, the one and a half uh, pounds of sugar uh, seems to be pretty good but i might kick it down for the next one we'll see what happens when this thing cools down and um, once it's said and done right
that's good enough. The lids are disinfected. So I'm just going to turn them off and uh, we're going to switch over. Okay. Bring the glass uh, tray forward. I'm going to kick this up a little bit. <clears throat> and I'm going to bring this guy over here. And I'm going to put this guy over here and I'm going to put it on in the back on low heat just to keep the heat on it okay uh, that way it doesn't cool down this shouldn't take long once they start going once the process is just become tick, 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 you just do um, but just in case just in case I'm gonna wait until this cools down a little bit before putting the glass on there Is really good that's what we want You can tell uh, with the paste when it's heating up, it because it becomes uh, more uh, less viscous, more uh, I don't I don't think it's the right word is liquid, 
uh, but more liquidy, right? It doesn't stick as much. So it's less pasty, more fluid, I guess. I'm not sure what the, what the actual technical words are for it. And whenever uh, I'm stirring, I always go to the bottom of the pot, make sure I feel it. So make sure that there's nothing sticking. It's not burning to the bottom of the pot. Uh, that's really important. So you definitely want to stir uh, all the way to the bottom of the pot. And these are the for the jars, right? Initially, when I put them on, I don't go tight, too tight on them. You want the, you just want enough pressure to hold the lid down, and then it seals. Once it seals, you can make it tight. I'm not sure if you can see the steam coming off of it now. That's a good thing. do have uh, sort of a napkin because when the jars come out uh, here, let me show you. when I bring the jars out I'm gonna basically bring the jars out from the oven put them in here and then take scoops of the crab apple paste crab apple spread and pour it in but you know I'm not accurate all, always to get it in there right sometimes you get spillage on on the glass right so what I want to do is seal not sealed but wipe the rim of the glass and then put the put the lid on it because you don't want anything between the rim and the lid because it's gonna try to create a vacuum and make a seal that's the you know once you do that then these things last a long time you can keep them for a few years without them uh, becoming moldy or going bad but if you have things between the rim and the seal, then air can get in there. And once air gets in there, oxygen, that's the reason you get molding, right? I'm pretty sure anyway. But you basically, you want to make it a vacuum seal. You don't want oxygen getting in there. You don't want air getting in there. So you need a little wet, wet napkin and just seal it, you know, wipe it down after I pour it up. And I don't go all the way to the top top right you just go to about there that's good enough okay okay that's nice and hot now this is nicely steaming and we do okay so so far we've had this thing going for about uh, the timer on the uh, on the camera says around 36 minutes okay
very nice. Definitely has that tart, tart taste to it. Very good, very good. As soon as I lift up the lid before, I just stick this in there and give the top a little spin and that way I don't get the volcanic eruptions of the paste flying up. down to low okay and we're gonna bring out our first jar let's do this I need and definitely definitely you're gonna need mittens okay to see this but let's do So that's high enough, right? So I'm going to give this a wipe. Okay, and I'm going to grab a lid, throw it on there. Okay, make sure it's tight or make sure it's sitting nicely right so what i'm going to do now is i'm just gonna close it but not very tight okay i just want to make sure it's sitting in place and we're going to do it as many times as we need i got 11 uh, 12 of the jars in here so i got 11 more i might need more okay we'll see we'll see Okay, so this is the process. Um, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try a little experiment. I'm gonna try to move the camera and maybe bring it closer so you see uh, closer up. Uh, if it works, it works. If not, uh, this is it. Uh, you're done afterwards. All you gotta do is, uh, uh, what do you call it? Just give the jars a little wipe because there's a little spillage on the sides and stuff. So you do wanna you know, make sure there's no stickiness around the, around the jars. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get your hands on some crab apples and make yourself some crab apple spread. That's absolutely delicious. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.